Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This is Perpetuality. Seiko has made some tremendous efforts in the last couple of years to move their products up market. And that means filling in niches that they haven't done so before. We see this here with the Sharp Edge GMT, new for 2021. This is the Aitetsu dial that is one of many different color variants released this year. Now, this watch is kind of special because the Seiko has historically not given us North America, that is, a GMT automatic movement watch. And this has a couple of things going for it that I'd love to share with you. We'll dig into the full review, we'll cover if this watch is worth you investigating it, and if it's worth adding to your collection. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, I do want to say one thing, that is the um, next coming weeks I will be getting more of the Seiko 2021 lineup for review. So please stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you haven't already as it really helps the channel grow and uh, definitely please like the video. It pushes the video out there and uh, the more people that can see my content, the more that I'm able to continue doing this as well too. Thank you so much. Now what's the heart of this watch? It's none other than the Caliber 6R64. It uses the 6R35 as a base and has the GMT function built into it. Now it has 45 hours of power reserve and it beats at roughly 21,600 vibrations per hour. Accuracy is as good as 6 to 8 seconds that I've measured on my wrist and on the time grapher. Now mind you, the movement is not new. It's new to North America, but in Japan it was featured in the Landmaster a couple years ago. Actually more recently. If you think about that Seiko has the guts to bring this movement over to North America, that states their intention to move up market. Now with the Aitetsu dial, you're getting a copper colored arrow GMT hand. And that hand can be adjusted with the movement of the crown to move and advance the hour and minutes. But the interesting part is you can actually pull out the crown one step out and jump the hour. This is extremely useful if you're traveling and you like to lock the GMT hand to your home country and have the minutes stay the way that they are because the minutes don't change. The hours do when you're trying to move from time zone to time zone. So I feel like Seiko has had the foresight to include this. This makes it almost like a budget Rolex GMT Master in a way because this function is exactly as you see on the GMT Master. We can't go too far without mentioning that dial. And here is the Aitetsu dial. The patterning that's used on this dial is quite unique. It is actually, in Japan, deemed to be the hemp leaf pattern that was used or familiar in Japanese culture for its use in the Heian period over a thousand years ago. The fibers of the leaf or the plant were traditionally used to stamp out and leave a pattern on clothing and decorative items. It was highly important to Japanese culture because it resembles good health. And the rich texture of that um, Japanese hemp leaf reflects light beautifully. As you see here, there's depth and clarity to this dial that's unmatched for the money. I see that the hands uh, are the dolphin hands familiar to the previous sharp edge. And the execution, as far as I can see, is flawless. They reflect light brilliantly suggesting that they're far, far more expensive looking than they are. The GMT has a unique Aero GMT adjustment hand, and for each model, you get contrasting GMT hand. In the blue dial that we see here, you get this copper salmon colored GMT Aero hand that matches the outer chapter ring in that same copper color. At six o'clock, bizarre enough, is actually a date indicator. And I thought it was actually like a third time zone, but it's not. The uh, hand stack is extremely tight. I can't see any visible flaws with my macro lens. I can tell that the way the, lights, the uh, light reflects off the hands, they've been high polished to a fine degree. You're also getting a power reserve indicator for those 45 hours of power reserve that you're getting with the movement. The printing deemed to be extremely sharp. There's no spillage of material. The way that it sits on the dial is quite remarkable and they've done this extremely well. Japan proudly emblazoned near the seven o'clock. I feel like the indices on the dial have also been brushed and then polished on the side to catch light beautifully. Uh, 
I won't bore you guys with the stats, I'll leave the numbers here for the measurements of the watch. Just know that it is 42.2 millimeters wide, and the way that it sits on the wrist is about 49 millimeters long. This makes it a larger wearing watch. It does sit stout on small wrist. I have a wrist about six and a quarter inch in circumference, and the way that the lugs kind of come down towards the wrist makes it manageable. I feel like the only thing that holds this watch back a little bit for me is the sheer width of the case and the dial. Uh, there's a lot of real estate there. But it's interestingly enough, it's not overpowering. I like to say that with this kind of watch, the interesting dial textures that um, are reflecting light beautifully are made even more noticeable because of the wrist presence of the sheer size of the watch. I do think that on my wrist, it's not super uh, overbearing. It is something that I could wear every day. Interestingly enough, it is mostly uh, high polished and brush finishing. So high polish is on the side flank of the case and I don't believe it's Zeratsu polishing. It is coated with Seiko's proprietary Dia Shield hardened coating to resist scratches. And under bright lighting conditions, the coating takes on a brown hue on the steel. Something to note, the overall thickness of the case is something that is kind of a letdown for me. Being closer to 15 millimeters thick, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong here, it does sit on the wrist a little bit tall. The saving grace is those lugs that come down do provide comfort. Now, the other thing to note is you're not getting a screw down crown with this particular watch. Although you're getting about 100 meters of water resistance, it's. I wish that Seiko had included a screw down crown for this particular watch. It would just elevate that everyday wearing status of this watch even further. Although the crown does not have threads for it to be screwed in, it is actually a beautiful crown. Bead blasted in deep relief and signed with the Seiko S logo, it is also appropriately sized to get a good purchase on. I feel like Seiko has done well in this area, the crown is beautiful. The finishing of the case is remarkable, with that brushed finishing at the top of the lugs dropping off extremely sharp to the edge of the case. It's almost like a katana in this way. It's very beautiful, reminiscent to me of Grand Seiko actually. The finishing carries on to the bracelet, and as you can see, it's done extremely well, reflecting light beautifully. The bracelet features a double locking mechanism for the clasp, and it is reassuring. Um, the overall bracelet execution is interesting. It's a three-piece link with uh, double polished miniature sections at the center. Uh, it is 20 millimeters, and it doesn't taper very much from the top side, from the end links, to the clasp. The overall feeling of the bracelet is to be high quality. Even the fine finishing, the brush finishing on the clasp is consistent to all the way to the brushed surfaces of the other links of the bracelet, then split apart by two high polished, high polished sections that make up the entire bracelet. The double locking mechanism is reassuring and don't feel like it will slip off your clasp. However, my only gripe with it they only give you two points of micro adjustments. I wish that they gave us a larger clasp to accommodate bigger wrists. I think that the overall value of this watch is tremendous. I didn't mention previously, but the bezel material is actually steel and it's dia shield coated. It's hardened steel actually, so it's a little bit more robust than your conventional uh, aluminum bezel insert you'd get with these watches. Mind you, I feel like the overall execution of the numerals on the bezel are a fair size, they're legible, and they look quite handsome. The overall look of this watch, um, really the star of the show, is the dial. Matched with that beautiful um, patterning on that dial, it stands out to reflect light like no tomorrow. The feeling of the case and the way that they've been polished, it's almost a step below Zeratsu. Now, I can't find anywhere that it is Zeratsu polished, but the quality is tremendous in hand. You are really paying for the movement, however, and at right around $1,700 Canadian, this is the price of this watch, it's not inexpensive. Now, keep in mind that most dual-time GMT, true GMT watches that have a jump hour adjustment are usually twice the price, if not a little bit more. One example is the Omega Aquaterra, 
which does have that um, beautiful coaxial movement and that jump hour mechanism that makes it extremely useful. Now, I feel like Seiko has done well and punched above its weight with this watch. The only things that hold it back for me are the sheer width of the watch and the thickness. I feel like Seiko could have done better to miniaturize the case. I'm going to show you the loom, and I will have to say that the Seiko Lumabrite proprietary loom that they use here, it's good, it's bright, but the longevity is not there. I've had this um, lit up with my torch, and basically I feel like the amount of Lumabrite that's been applied is not enough on the dial and hands for it to last a long enough time for it to be useful. That was just my experience, but your mileage may vary when you check out this watch. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked the video today, please consider liking the video. I'd like to hear from you guys what you think are good GMT watches for under $2,000. Sound off in the comments, and I'll definitely catch you in the next one.